Here's how you can light paint composite with some LED strings from Target. To begin the whole thing, I came up with a concept. And with this concept, before I even went and bought anything, before I even started shooting, I write down the concept and I get a good rough plan. So this concept is I wanted to have a self-portrait that also portrayed like my heart as a light painted shape, if that makes sense. So I'd be playing with the heart and trying to interact with it in the photos themselves. So after that, I went out and I bought a string light from Target. It's one of those little battery powered string lights. So you'll stick the batteries in and it's like the ones that you can tape up and hang over your bed and you know, like the little ooh fairy lights. So I got those, I bundled up the lights and I taped it to the battery pack after I put the batteries in obviously, because otherwise, oof, that's a... That's a mess. And then I taped a string on top of that, that way I can spin it around and it'll do its lighty up thing. You'll also need a tripod, you'll also need a wireless remote so you can trigger your camera. And I used an MC light, so the Aperture MC is an amazing little light and I used it to actually get the correct lighting for the portrait. I also had these nice little Wi-Fi LED bulbs. I think they're Philips bulbs. I don't exactly remember, but I also use those in this just to get a little bit of extra color in the background. So for shooting, I also made sure that I had a little thing that I could reference so I can get the perfect focus point. So this thing was actually a light stand and I would put it in the frame where I would be so that I can focus on that light stand. And then I would just trade myself for the light stand to be able to take the pictures and actually have myself in focus. This is if you don't have really good face detecting autofocus, which I didn't. I turned on my overhead RGB bulbs, then I got the lighting for the portrait. So with the portrait, it was very, very important that I had the light be exactly where the heart would be because I wanted the heart to be the light in the frame. So I needed to put the light where it should be in the frame. So for one of them, the light was supposed to be on my heart. I held it in two different ways. I held it with one hand and positioned my other hand in the pose that I needed it to be. And then I would switch. I'd hold it with the other hand and position my other hand. That way I can composite those two together in post and remove the light a lot easier. And I also recommend doing it with the no light, that way it's really, really easy. I got this idea mainly from watching this guy on Instagram. His handle is at Callup. He does these incredible composites and I noticed that he always puts the light where the thing with the light technically is. So then comes the light painting. Once you've gotten all your portraits out of the way, then you'll turn off all the lights, make sure you're in some black clothing, become a super cool looking ninja with a weird light that you're going to swing around. Trust me, it's a lot of fun and it's definitely going to be needed because you don't want to be seen in your photos. When you get to the light painting, make sure that you make each shape individually. That way you can composite them a lot easier instead of trying to make multiple shapes in the same picture and then trying to use that later. This is if you want to keep it like super, super sharp and clean and the shapes really, really perfect. Otherwise, feel free go ham like give it a shot make multiple shapes maybe even try and make the full composite in just that single image i have tried to do it. it is very difficult if you can do it i would love to see your attempts now when you're making shapes i highly recommend flowing with the ideas that pop up into your head they may not have anything to do with the shoot that you're actually doing but play around with it because you may be pleasantly surprised at what you'll create when you're creating a shape think about how it is in physical space use your depth Picture yourself in a box, like make yourself a little grid or something, whatever you need in front of you. That way you know, like, okay, whenever I go closer to the camera, it will be physically bigger. Whenever I come further away from the camera, it will be physically smaller. Now for these light painting photos, I used bulb mode at 4.5 and ISO 100. Now this isn't a guaranteed will work every time. You need to play around with your settings, but I do highly recommend using bulb mode so you can control when the camera opens and when it closes. That way you can get the perfect shape that you need. I'll also say this as a quick tip. Whenever you're making light painting shapes, if you're drawing them by hand, make sure to use reference points. Just find two points that you can use as a start and an end. They'll be much more precise than if you're just trying to freehand it and wing it every single time. We are going to move into the editing phase now. Usually, whenever I edit, I make sure that I'm very, very organized in order to make the edit go that much smoother. Once I get organized, I then bring them into Lightroom and I do my base edits on the portraits and then I'll do the base edits on the light painting. Make sure with the light painted photos that you will always have the blacks be black. You really need to make sure of that, that way it'll be much easier to use blend modes when you composite it in Photoshop later. 
Now we're gonna bring the angles that you have for your portraits into Photoshop. Make sure that you have the angles where you're holding it with one hand and the other hand and without the hand, because make sure to get those, that's very important. That way you can combine all those together and then you can remove the light very, very easily and have the realistic lighting that you have. It's not much editing, you don't have to add fake light, none of that, it's already there. So once I removed the light, I created the inner hole where the heart would sit. I wanted to make it a little hazy, make it a little mystical and dreamy. I did so using just a paintbrush and a little bit of finagling. After I created the hole, that's when I came in and I added all the shapes. So with the shapes, I usually go into Lightroom, make sure the blacks are black, export them all into a single folder so that they're JPEGs and they're much easier to use in Photoshop. So I bring those into Photoshop, I change their blend mode to lighten, I mask out the parts that may be showing, like more than likely my face or my hands. <laughs> I mask the parts out that I don't need and don't want, and I'll then put them into place where they need to be in the frame. After I put them into place, in the frame. I'll then match the color using some hue saturation and also some curves and then I will also try to match the blur with the camera lens blur. I mainly just did this with Gaussian blur and then making sure that it's a smart object when you bring it in. If you don't have it as a smart object all you have to do is right click you scroll down convert to smart object and then that way whenever you apply an effect you can use a mask on that effect. You can show the effect in certain areas that are white on the mask or not show the effect in other areas which will be shown in black on the mask. Once I matched the blur and the colors and I had all the shapes in the correct places, I merge the image into one and then I'll do a little bit of sharpening and then I'll hit save. When I save it, this will bring it directly back into Lightroom. Once in Lightroom, I'll just add a little bit of a vignette and then I'll export it. And once you export it, that's done. It's all done. All that hard work paid off from the shooting to the editing. Now you have yourself a beautiful light painting composite. And that is how you light paint composite with an LED string light from Target. I hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys in the next one.